Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about using our virtual dyno software in conjunction with our K-Manager software when we're doing our tuning. So when we're doing our wide open throttle tuning, we're going to be capturing data logs, be able to play back the data log and review what our spark timing is doing, what our air fuel is doing, and what our variable cam is doing, along with all the other parameters. Now we can take those same data logs, we can export them out of our K-Manager software and import them into our virtual dyno software. That's going to allow us to plot the horsepower and torque that our engine's making. We're going to find it's pretty comparable to a chassis dyno. As long as you're following along with the tips and tricks I'm going to be showing you in this video, you'll get really accurate results. That's going to allow us to measure the changes in our spark timing or measuring the changes going from one cam angle to the next or even find your VTEC engagement point overlaying your low and high cam torque curves. So I'm going to be showing you a bunch of different examples of what you should look for in using the virtual dyno software and then some things that you want to avoid in some bad data logs and how it's going to be plotting wrong in the virtual dyno so you can avoid doing that and you can have very accurate and successful results using virtual dyno. We're going to have a lot to cover so let's jump into the video so we can check all this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at working with our virtual dyno software in conjunction with our K-Manager software to evaluate the horsepower and torque our engine's making when we're doing our tuning process. So this is going to be an invaluable tool if we want to go in and figure out how much additional spark timing we need to add and seeing the power it's going to be gaining. Now we know we can pay attention to things like our knockout. We've watched in the live training videos that I've been walking through how to start with conservative spark timing by adding it in and then watching what the knockout's going to do. But there's going to be situations where you are going to add spark timing. It's not going to produce knockout, but it's not going to be producing horsepower and torque. If you're using your butt dyno, it's going to be really hard to feel any kind of actual power gain because if there's minimal power gain, um, it's not going to be night and day difference by going in and adding a timing in. So we may not want to run that much timing. We might want to have a little bit less timing. So we can use the uh, virtual dyno to show us the cause and effect with our spark timing changes as well as our cam angles. So if we go from 20 degree to 30 degree cam angle, um, we're going to be expecting to gain power, but that's not always going to be the case. We can use the virtual dyno to actually overlay two poles with two different cam angles and see which is going to make more power. In addition to this, we also can use it to figure out our VTEC engagement point. So if we do a pull on the low cam, do a pull with the VTEC locked very low on the high cam, and then figure out where the two torque curves are going to be crossing on our virtual dyno graph, um, we'll find that we can determine the VTEC engagement point. So just like a chassis dyno, the virtual dyno is going to be a very, very useful tool. Now, it's only going to be as accurate as your data logs and the data that you're using and capturing in your data logs and putting into the actual virtual dyno program. So I'm going to show you how to export the data logs out. I'm going to be showing you a couple different examples of uh, data logs that are correct and showing you kind of before and after using it in your tuning process, showing you some bad data logs, um, things that you want to avoid, and then also some things taking a look at your cam angle going from one cam angle to the next or 